or you, and have the Excellence in Education honorees presentation. What's going on? Good evening. Good evening. Just checking to make sure you guys are all out there. My name is Nicole Warner, and I am a proud member of the Education Committee. I live in the city of Bowie, and I am among education advocates. We have a cohort of people who work every single day. We have jobs, and we commit to thinking about our scholars in Bowie, our teachers, and how do we make sure that we are building excellence right here within our city. And so it is a pleasure to be a part of the Education Committee. It's a pleasure to honor people who are working towards that goal every single day. So even though our colleagues cannot be here, and I'm short in stature, I'm representing a committee that has been working extremely hard to honor students, in their pursuit of excellence. We have some amazing scholars in Bowie. Amazing scholars. It is fantastic, it's been fantastic to really look at their scholarship applications and to hear the commitment that they not only have for bettering themselves, but ways that they're gonna come back and support the community. You don't always see that. And so that warms our spirit and we're recognizing them tonight for really strong applications for scholarship. Uh, celebrate, hello, let's do some applause. <laughs> now, of course, we wish that we could be giving tons and tons more money. Look into my left, <laughs> look into my right to see who gives out those, who has those heavy pockets. But we know that our scholars that we're recognizing tonight, they are demonstrating excellence, hard work, and commitment. It has been a very difficult year, and we've talked about the hard work for teachers, but that stress is, on, is all on students. They have a lot that they have to carry, and they've had to grow up and be independent and carry a lot of tasks on their own. And tonight, we are recognizing several scholars uh, that we, uh, we're very proud. So when I call their names, I'm gonna ask them to come up, stand here, I'll give them a certificate, and we'll ask the entire group to remain here so that we can smile and get a great picture. And I know that you celebrated a little bit in the beginning, but we'll do a huge cheer to recognize all of their hard work. Can we do that? Yes. All right. First um, certificate, and I'll go ahead and read what it says. Certificate of Bowie Excellence in Education Scholarship presented to, in the person's name, in recognition of your outstanding scholastic achievements. This award goes to Amaya Davis, Bowie <laughs> High School. <laughs> Certificate of Excellence in Education Scholarship, Lydia Gurma. Certificate of Excellence in Education Scholarship, Jordan McKnight. Chatting because everybody wants to know what are they going to be doing after they graduate. We have over here where you're going, Howard University. Howard University. <laughs> and then we have our University of Maryland. <laughs> One and two. So I'll get out of the way because I know you guys are taking quick pictures. And then one 
one for me, I'm sweet, okay? <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to my colleague to recognize some other student scholars. Good evening. My name is Gabrielle Davison. I'm here on behalf of the Arts Committee. And we would like to recognize Gabrielle McAllister. She recently graduated from Elizabeth Seton High School. She will be going to Syracuse University to study music education. Um, congratulations. <laughs> That gives us a lot of joy. Uh, of course, our scholars are still in school. It has not ended. So we're going to allow them when they're um, ready. They can excuse themselves. So please, if you see them standing up, exiting, we're actually celebrating that they're getting some good night, a good night rest, ready for school tomorrow. Uh, the second part of our awards committee is we're recognizing our educators. Um, yeah, clap it up. Now, people said that during the pandemic was the most difficult year for educators. But I don't know. After the pandemic, you're having to deal with trauma, having to deal with uh, building stamina, and the learning loss that's happening um, all while maintaining your own well-being. That is a difficult task. Uh, and coming to work, right? I'm a former educator myself, and that certainly has been a challenge with educators even just showing up. So we, on behalf of the Education Committee, want to thank you for not just showing up, but showing up with excellence, showing up with care, showing up with dedication. And you are being recognized from your principals, your school leaders, but our Education Committee wants you to know that we see you. We see you, and we are so proud that you are continuing to support the next wave of leaders of our Bowie scholars. And we just want to say thank you for your hard work, your dedication, and we celebrate all that you're inputting into our scholars. Thank you for that. Yay. I love that cheering section. <laughs> I also, before we recognize our teachers, I noticed several principals in the room. I'm going to ask you to just stand up because you recommended many of the educators. Yes, I'm going to call you on the spot. There we are. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for recognizing that even though there's hard work there, you see excellence happening inside of your building. And that takes courage. Not all leaders do that. And so I want to make sure that we're recognizing the fact that they see you on a consistent basis. And they could have chosen many individuals, but they chose you. So starting first, City of Bowie Excellence in Education Award presented to person's name in recognition of your outstanding professional achievements. Katie Bryant, St. Pius Regional School. I want to see those big smiles as you're coming up. Come on, there it, there it is. Excellence in Education Award, Jade David, Whitehall Elementary School. Yay. 
Education and Excellence Award, Melody Dillon, Grace Christian School. Excellence in Education Award from Tulip Grove Elementary School, Elizabeth Drummond. <laughs> Excellence in Education Award from Yorktown Elementary School, Hasina Thomas. Excellence in Education Award from Kenilworth Elementary, Kimberly McGruder. <laughs> Excellence in Education Award presented to uh, from Samuel Ogle Middle School, Donna Mason. Excellence in Education Award from Kenilworth Elementary School, Iman Parker. <laughs> Excellence in Education Award from Yorktown Elementary School, Jennifer Sanadat. Excellence in Education Award from Samuel Ogle Middle School, Michael Stewart. <laughs> Excellence in Education Award from Highbridge Elementary School, Deetra Tasco. Excellence in Education from Grace Christian School, Melba Wills. <laughs> Excellence in Education Award from Tulip Grove Elementary School, Michelle Wilson. On behalf of the entire education committee, we just celebrate our educators. Uh, we know that they will have a fantastic summer. How could they not with this type of celebration? And we know that they will continue to inspire other scholars, but not only other scholars, other educators, so that we can keep the focus on education and excellence in Bowie. Round of applause for all. One more time, we have another scholar, a student scholar, uh, who received the education scholarship. And why not present it among all these wonderful educators? I'm going to ask him to come to the front. Education and Excellence Scholarship Award, Dirk Wingate. <laughs> and we'll get one final picture. Want them to 
to be alert. That is how they won this award. And so if they're not able to stay for the meeting, uh, please excuse them so that they can continue on serving our scholars. Round of applause for everyone. <laughs> And thank you all for coming as well, being great guests and advocates. We appreciate you. I just, just one quick thing. When we talk about Bowie, and we talk about our city, and we talk about how proud we are, this is an example of the excellence in our city. So I really want all of us, if you could, to please stand and give them an ovation for what they do. At this time, Madam City Clerk, would you confirm that we have a quorum? Yes, Mayor, uh, we do have a quorum this evening right now. We have in Council Chambers, Council Member Estev, Mayor Pro Tem and Debumado, Council Member Hawkins, I'm, I'm sorry, Truesdale, and Mayor Adams. Thank you. At this time, I will ask if, if there are any agenda additions, deletions, or amendments. Hearing none, we'll move on to citizen participation. We have no one signed up to speak this evening, Mayor. Thank you. We will now move on to anything for city boards and committees? No, Mayor. Okay. We'll go to city council announcement. Council members, do you have any announcements? I'll take the first one, and that being, I just want to say thank you again to all those uh, from the staff, to the vendors, to the people, everything. We had a magnificent buoy fest. 
this past weekend. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming out and for all the staff, all the hard work for all of them to put that on because it was a magnificent event. And I just want to say thank you. I also want to say thank you for the parade we had. That also was a great event. And again, I thank the, the citizens and all the participants, but particularly the staff for all the work they do in making sure that that happened. So thank you so very much for that. Anyone else? It's time, Cliff, okay. No. Yeah, I, I would like to second, um, thank you staff, thank you everyone. Um, great event, I know it's been a long time coming, the pandemic kinda had everyone uh, shut down, and but for the most part, um, this past two weeks has been fabulous. Thank you, city staff. Okay. We will now go with the city manager's report. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Mayor, since I just got back in the country, I got no, no report today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Glad to be Thank back. you. At this time, I will entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move to adopt the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Opposed, same favor. Hearing none, the motion carries. We will now go on to old business. I will entertain. Uh, do we need to go to the uh, city staff or anything or simply go to our? No. OK. Uh, I will be I'll open to end. Mr. Mayor, I motion. second motion um, to move to adopt the amended. Oh, I, okay. I think staff is uh, pointing at me right now. Uh, I'd like to move to accept the amendments reflected in amended ordinance 0 5 23. 23. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All in favor, please respond with an aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same favor. Hearing none, the motion carries. The second. Sorry, second. staff, thank you. Uh, I'd like to move to adopt uh, ordinance 0-7-23 uh, with the amendments reflected. No, 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 we, nope. we just oh, want to do the second. 0523. 0523. We, we accepted Did we just the do 05 or 07? That was just 05. 052. So, what it is is we accepted the the changes the amendment now we have to adopt the amendment we have to adopt it with the changes officially okay so I'd like to move to adopt amended ordinance 0-5-23 great I second. second it's been moved and properly second that we accept amended ordinance 0-5-2-3 any discussion? Hearing none, I'll um, call for the vote. I All just have a, quick, I have a question for uh, discussion. Okay, one moment, go ahead. Oh, um, I guess my question is for, is really probably for staff or city manager. The only thing that before we move forward to adopt the amended motion, there's only one kind of question or change I'd like to kind of explore, but I know with the timing, we have to adopt our budget by tonight, and so, is there still an opportunity to maybe amend or change a particular objective? That's the only question that I have. I don't think. <clears throat> oh, well, Mayor Pro Tem, the council can make adjustments and changes to the budget during the course of the year as you see fit for, for what, it, as long as there's a majority vote and what you want to do is within the scope of the charter. So. Thank you for that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Opposed, same favor. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, we need to hear on 0723. I will be turning it over to city staff. I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, we also need um, a motion to uh, adopt the CIP resolution R twenty or R twenty five twenty three. 
which is part goes in conjunction with the the budget, but that one did not have any amendment, but we need the motion to adopt that resolution as well. Okay. Uh, Mike, you got it? Yes, so I would like to move to adopt, actually, is that listed under old business? Yeah. 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 It's part of the budget oh, ordinance. I see, I see, yeah. I see. So I'd like to move to adopt resolution R-25-23. Second. Been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Opposed, same favor. Hearing none, motion carried. So, and then we got another one, I understand. We need to do the second one, All right. accepting the amended. So I would like to move to adopt ordinance 0-7-23. Yeah. So that one is a whole separate ordinance. It has nothing to do with the regular budget ordinance. This one is an amendment. So are we to out of order our moving? current fiscal year ordinance. So I don't know if our finance director would elaborate a little bit more on that one. Uh, so I was, are we out of uh, order with a, uh, a motion on that, or do we need to go through some other steps? There's a public hearing for that one okay. because it was just introduced at the last meeting at the May 15th. So this one is the public hearing for it, and then it would take the vote on it. Mr. Matthews, would you please give a short explanation about this? Thank you, Mr. Lott. Good evening, Council, mm -hmm. Mayor. On behalf of Alfred Lott, City Manager uh, for the City of Bowie, I'd like to introduce the supplemental appropriation for the annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023, Ordinance 0723. Ordinance 0723 provides a supplemental appropriation for the physical year ending June 30th, 2023 for the following purpose. Council's meeting on May 15th, 2023, Council instructed staff to issue a contract to JLG Architects uh, Minneapolis for the planning, design, and engineering and permitting services for a new single sheet ice arena. The additional funding is $302,000. Council's approval of Ordinance 0723 providing the supplemental appropriation for the annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023 is requested. Thank you, Council and Mayor. Okay. Uh, this is open for a public hearing, correct? Yes, Mayor. So I'd like to now open it for public hearing. And we do not have uh, anyone signed up to speak on this item tonight? No one to speak? No. Nope. So we will declare the public hearing closed. Okay, I will be, if there is a motion, I will entertain a motion at this time. A lot of motion to adopt O's. Uh, mm -hmm. Colleagues, I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 0-7-23. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Opposed, same favor. Hearing none, motion carries. We will now be moving to new business and hearing a presentation from the Bowie Bick. Hi, and you could slide that over. I can slide this over, thank you. Please, as comfortable as you like to. Thank you. Good evening. Um, good, evening. good evening, Mayor Adams, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, in Nubai in Madu. In Debra Madu. Madu. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, city council members, um, also Bowie uh, staff, um, and the city manager, um, John Henry King, and to the staff of Bowie. I'm June Evans, and I am pleased to um, be here tonight to give you an update, an annual update of the Bowie Business Innovation Center. I will go over, here is our agenda uh, through the presentation, so I'll go over 
um, the Bowie Bake. If you're not familiar with us, I'll go over our team, um, our board of directors, our partnerships, our stats, and the impact that we've made in the community. The Bowie Business Innovation Center is an award-winning business accelerator hub um, for government contractors and technology companies across all industry, industry sectors. We are a Maryland nonprofit headquartered right on Bowie State University's campus. Bowie BIC, if you do not know, is the only business accelerator located at an HBCU within the state of Maryland. I would like to introduce you to my team this evening. Um, as I mentioned, I am June Evans. I am the executive director. Um, and here I have with me Crystal Clark, who is our director of operations. Antoinette Smith, who is our Bowie Be membership program manager. And sorry, in her absence, we just hired our administrative assistant, Jordan Young, um, who couldn't be here this evening. Also would like to introduce you to our executive team of our board of directors. I think you might have a familiar face in there somewhere, <laughs> maybe, no. Uh, Jesse Bugs, who is the chair, and he is uh, the director of grants here with the city of Bowie. Is Jesse in the room? Jesse's here. Also, uh, Mark Lawrence, who is the co-chair. Wendy Jenkins could not be here this evening, but she is our secretary and Greg Busnick is our treasurer. One of the great partnerships that we have with the Bowie Business Innovation Center, or also known as the Bowie BIC, is the partnership that we have with Bowie State University. Um, it is a unique partnership, and we're very proud of that partnership. Um, it is what makes our accelerator very unique and allow us to be able to leverage the wonderful resources that a, an HBCU have, or just an institution of higher learning has with students and connect them to the businesses within the community to help the students develop and grow, but also help our small businesses develop and grow. I'm, I'm pleased to say that that partnership that we have with Bowie State is growing and it's expanding, and I'll share with you in one of the ways a little bit as we go down the, the presentation. Oh, sorry. Oh, I went by really fast. That was really fast. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, the Bowie Bank is an acceleration hub. And what I mean by an acceleration hub is that we work with existing businesses and we help them scale up and go to the next level. Here you see some of the, almost like the flow, sorry, of how the, the accelerator, the Bowie Big Accelerator works. So a business will come in, we'll give them an assessment. We, they will receive business coaching. They will also uh, receive uh, advice from one of our growth advisors. They have access to scale up services through our open door sessions. They also, as a member, have access to co-working space, meeting space right there on Bowie State's campus. Um, and they also are able to connect with students, entrepreneurial-minded students, that can work with them almost as in a consulting basis to help them solve problems or create projects that can help their business grow. Here we ha I have a list of the programs that we offer with the Bowie BIC our Bowie Big Accelerator, which I just explained the process of being a part and a member of the Bowie Big. But we also have an award-winning, first of its kind, 8A Accelerator, which is primarily focused on government contractors. We have our Level Up, our Scale Up Accelerator, which focuses on helping businesses become bankable, understanding the access to capital, and really preparing their financials to access that capital. And then, as you all are probably aware and will be having soon is our Innovate Bowie 2023, which will be held right here at City Hall in July. And our up and coming new uh, Center of Excellence for 8A Government Contractor Contracting, which is, which is strengthening our partnership with Bowie State University. So here is some stats 
to share with you to understand the work that we're doing and the impact that we're making um, within Prince George's County, but also in the city of Bowie. So amongst our accelerators, just for this year alone in FY23, we have had 62 small businesses go through our accelerators. Collectively, these businesses have generated 321 jobs within Prince George's County. Uh, collectively, uh, the, these, these companies are generating over $36 million in revenue. And within the cohorts, how we do fall, spring cohorts, collectively of the participants, they may not have graduated yet, but they're, some of them are in the process of working through the accelerators. We have 91 currently right now that are going through our accelerator programs. And from direct services, just with the Bowie BIC alone, we have served 346 entrepreneurs within FY23. So within the city of Bowie, we have touched 100 small businesses right here within the city of Bowie, which equals up to 29% of the businesses served. So once again, our Bowie Big Accelerator, which is our premier program that really incubates the businesses um, that come into the Bowie Big. And one of the benefits to that is if you're a small business and you uh, need, whether it's space, uh, office space, or just some kind of co-working space, a way to collaborate with other businesses, or just a place to plop your laptop down and be able to work, but you also get a, a Bowie uh, address. So you're able to receive your mail and actually be able to have your business set up within the city of Bowie through an incubation um, period. Within our ADA Accelerator this year, we've had two cohorts, 32 participants, and as I mentioned before, a total of over $36 million of revenue that these companies are generating um, by going through the ADA Accelerator and just continuing to grow and develop and work within that federal government space. Our Level Up Scale Up Accelerator, there were 51 businesses going through that this year. And then we have our Center of Excellence for ADA Government Contracting. This is a new pilot program that was actually recognized by Senator Ben Cardin's office last year. We were awarded $3 million to partner with Bowie State and to show and build an example of how uh, a community organization or um, accelerator or incubator can partner with a historically black college university, come together and work and help small businesses grow and develop, which will create economic development impact in the communities in which they serve. The center will provide procurement capture strategies, mentorship programs, access to commercial online market intelligence tools, access to legal expertise in government contracting, and it will also provide new opportunities for students in faculty research. The center will be a resource and a clearinghouse for best practices in ADA government contracting, and the data will be utilized and analyzed to help Bowie State University and other HBCUs. So it will be a 14 other HBCUs that will join this pilot program and they will partner up with 8A companies and the impact within their communities is what's gonna help grow those businesses in those communities. The awarding of funds for the establishment of the center will support the creation of successful, diverse, and inclusive government contracting activity that will drive the generation of new jobs and wealth creation amongst these communities. An overview of the particular program within itself is that the pilot program will expand our 8A accelerator program and it will expand it through the HBCU network. It will allow us to build capacity, the HBCUs to build capacity, as well as the 8A companies to build capacity. And they will partner together to pursue government contracts. Through these partnerships, the HBCUs and the 8A companies will jointly compete for and manage acquisition opportunities that will advance the efforts in research and development, entrepreneurship, and workforce development. 
To date, as a timeline of where we are in developing this pilot program, within the first, first quarter, which started uh, October 1st of 2022, we were able to establish our business processes. We were able to hire business advisors. So now the Bowie BIC um, has its own business advisors for accounting purposes and legal purposes. We uh, were able to launch our fall 8A accelerator that's bringing in the 8A businesses, training them, getting them ready to understand how to leverage the 8A program for growth and success. And then in quarter two, we were able to finalize that project plan, hire our uh, first administrative assistant. So we're growing and we're very proud of that. Launch our spring 2023 8A accelerator program, um, it, I'll say, sorry, hire an administrative assistant, and then move on to quarter three, which is where we're in now, where we were able to launch our spring 2023 8 Accelerator Program. We will soon be hiring a project manager for that project, a grants manager, and host our project kickoff. And then in the fourth quarter of this year, we will successfully execute Bowie State subcontract in this arrangement, hire our business consultants, establish an advisory board, and identify our first HBCU partners. The next program that I mentioned is Innovate Bowie 2023. This will be in July of this year, and we're finalizing the date pretty much as we speak. Our theme for this year is going to be e-commerce, and it's going to be start selling on, we're going to help businesses start selling online. And the reason why we chose e-commerce is because we, looking at the makeup of the businesses, the small businesses that we've been working with, especially here within the city of Bowie, we have a lot of businesses that are home-based businesses. We have a lot of um, entrepreneurs that are uh, trying to start the business, but they're not ready to dive in full-time as of yet. And so understanding how to establish your, an online presence and, and understand and build that e-commerce strategy we thought would be a good theme for this year. So actually, um, we'll be working, and Amazon has um, said they want to be a part of it, so they will help to sponsor that event as well. Here are some of the awards that we've received over the last several years. Uh, we've been recognized by the International Business Innovation Association. We've uh, were named the sixth largest Maryland business incubator in 2021. Uh, we've received the Diversity and Inclusion and Entrepreneur Center, uh, Entrepreneurship Centers Awards uh, and, and so forth. And we're just continuing to, um, to grow and try to be trailblazers in what we do right here within the city of Bowie. Here are some of our partners. Um, as you can see, some of our local partners um, and our partnerships are growing. But the one thing that I would like to say, and, I, and if I didn't start off with thank you for all of the support that the city has given uh, the city of uh, the, the Bowie Business Innovation Center, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We could not get this far without the city of Bowie. It's the support from the city that allows us to have our stability within our operations so that we can grow and build these partnerships with other uh, sponsors and, and, and companies to allow us to do the programming that we need to touch the entrepreneurs directly. So it's your support that keeps us going and allow us to have that peace of mind that we're here, we belong here, we have a home here, and then we're out there connecting and, and working with, with other partners to make sure that we are tapping into other resources, that we're keeping connected with the business needs, and that we are addressing those needs. So um, that's my presentation for the evening. Um, it actually went quicker than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, I'm going to open it up for some questions if, if you have any questions at this time. Well, I, I think I'll just make a, a general comment uh, because I've had the, the distinct honor and privilege at times to work with the Bowie Big, uh, particularly with the 8A Accelerator yeah. and the SBA and others and coming in and talking to the businesses and other things. And for those who aren't aware, that is such a huge, huge milestone that we've covered now that 
Bowie State has been recognized, the BIC has been recognized to try and expand your services to others. I was fortunate enough to be there when the check was presented uh, by, by Senator Cardin and, and uh, I won't say Van Hollen, but it, you mm -hmm. know, it was great. And the thing about it is it, it is showing that this community, the city, that, that things are happening to try and help our small businesses and new businesses, as well as strengthening that relationship, not mm -hmm. only with the BIC, but also with uh, Bowie State University. Mm -hmm. So I commend you on that, and I've firsthand been able to see that progress, and I look forward to more amazing things in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else comment? Um, real quickly, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I, I love the fact that we've been able to work effectively with you guys uh, in partnership with Bowie State University now for many years. I do have one quick question. Um, do you guys keep track of which proportion of your businesses are originating in Bowie and then remaining in Bowie afterwards? I know that while they're in the program, they have a, a uh, Bowie address at Bowie State. Bowie State's not in the incorporated city. We still love them as neighbors. Um, but what's the, uh, what, what's the ratio of businesses that are originating in Bowie and then remaining in the incorporated city after the fact? So the number of business or the percentage of businesses that we work with that originate in Bowie is about 30%. We do not collect the data of whether they stay in the city of Bowie. Um, like I said, we are almost like an incubator. So we work with them to get to, you know, in that early stage midway stage but if they happen to graduate and leave out and leave out of the city of Bowie we don't track that at this time however um, if that's something that uh, you would like us to do we would definitely do that but about 30 percent of the businesses that we work with collectively are we start right here in the city of Bowie understood okay um, if that's data that you guys can collect I'd be very curious to see it um, and and I appreciate that that's something that you can you can pay attention to sure otherwise I greatly appreciate your work and thank you for everything, and please keep it up. Thank you. Anything? Um, thank you for coming out, June. It's so nice to see you. What a phenomenal presentation, and congratulations on all the work that you and your team have done for us over the last couple of months. It's really impressive thank to you. see the growth and the trajectory of the organization. I have a couple of questions, and hi, Mark. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, I, two statements and then a couple questions. One, I noticed that there wasn't a partnership or a connection with the Maryland Tech Council. How are you thinking about that? Is that something on your radar? Are you looking at partnering with them? Because they're quite a large organization that wields quite a significant amount of funding. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious kind of how you're thinking about that. So as of right now, um, the Maryland Tech Council, we do not have a direct partnership. They are a resource provider for us. Now, uh, the pr primarily, the businesses in which we serve are government contractors. However, we are dedicated to helping technology companies. We believe that technology crosses all industry sector and that technology is the route to innovation. So as we grow and develop, that will be something that um, is part of our growth strategy and our internal strategic plan. That's wonderful. Um, that's good to know. Um, I had the honor of meeting with them last week at ICSC in Vegas and just getting an update on all the things that they're up to, their strategic priorities. So I think that would be a really meaningful connection. Um, we're going to invite them to present to council just so that we can understand a little bit more about how they can be of service to our community. But I think that would be a really good resource to tap into a little bit further. Absolutely. The other thing is I saw that Truist was um, on the list of uh, potential funders, and I had the honor of meeting the president of their foundation two days ago and they're wielding a lot of funding to minority entrepreneurs that's one of the biggest focuses for them and they have two branches in Bowie mm -hmm. and they're looking to invest more in community development so where is the status on that I saw that you did an application November 2022 uh, I guess you were supposed to hear back in April did you hear back how did that go and is there anything I can do to support you in getting the funding that they have so um, and actually the point person that we're working with which with true is we actually are scheduled to meet for a follow-up um, within this month of June so we haven't had uh, the the movement in solidifying the partnership we have discussed potential opportunities for them um, they are interested particularly uh, in the 
the concept that we have with the Center of Excellence, um, but because we are still, this year was basically spent on set up, setting a lot of the processes up, establishing the, um, the actual foundation for the project, uh, we didn't get a chance to go deeper into how Truist can support those efforts. How, um, however, it is on our radar. We have had discussions and conversations, and so I can reach out to you and see if there's anything you could do to help push that along. Yeah, I, was I think say, Truist would be a great partner. For sure, and yes. they're expanding in our community, and mm -hmm. J them and J.P. Morgan Chase, I think mm -hmm. those are, because it looks like a lot of the funding that, I don't know if it's that you're going after or that's coming in your direction is like Finn's let me not use acronyms, mm -hmm. financial services institutions. And yes. so I see that there's a large focus on that. So anything I can do to support you there, just loop me in so I can continue to advocate on my Appreciate side and that. push the money in our direction. Um, so the other, and then also just make sure Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox is on your radar too. They have a really large foundation with a large endowment fund. So okay. let's get them on the radar, but let's just schedule a follow-up anyways. Okay. Um, okay, also the other thing that I saw too, couple questions. In the presentation, it looks like you have three resident companies and five non-resident companies right now. Mm -hmm. In totality, does that mean that you have eight companies that are involved in BIC that are essentially getting the resources, or what does that mean, and why was that statistic important for us to know? I just want to make sure I'm taking away what I should be taking away. Yes. So the, our uh, buoy BIC membership program is the numbers that you're looking at right right there. Those are the companies that either um, have physical space within our incubator on Bowie State's campus or they're affiliate businesses that are accessing the space from a remote or co-working or co collaborative perspective. Um, those numbers are important because those are businesses that have almost taken that next step of I've, I've I've worked with you to build my business plan. I've generated some revenue, and now I'm taking that first step into operating and separating myself and my business as a, as a, from a physical standpoint. And that's a very critical uh, point in the growth and development of a small business. And so those are what we consider our Bowie Big members because they actually pay a membership a fee, a monthly fee to access these resources. And so when you're working with businesses and you're trying to help businesses learn to invest, how to invest in their business and put money back into the business, part of that being a member of the Bowie Big membership program is a way to help them start understanding how to invest and put back into the business and help them as entrepreneurs and business owners grow. And so we we pull that out because that's very critical and, and that's where they go from the beginning phase because that's the middle phase and then they graduate and, and the growth continues to grow and grow and now as um, council uh, member Estev was saying, we want to see if once they start growing and growing and growing, do they stay here in the city of Bowie? And so we can extend our, our research and data collection to see. I appreciate that. That's helpful context. I'll try to wrap this up uh, briefly here. Something that I think about a lot is community integration. And part of where I think our focus should shift to in the next couple of years is figuring out how we can invest in our business base here and make sure that businesses are establishing offices and a footprint in the city of Bowie as opposed to the greater Prince George's County. I love Prince George's County, we're here to support them, but I want our folk, I want to make sure that our focal point stays on Bowie and getting making sure that we can have more businesses here to increase our commercial tax base. So that's a priority for me and something that I pay attention to. And so when I think about kind of like what you're saying, and I know that there is a heavy focus on government contracting, and I don't want to take away from that because I think that's very, very important. However, I want to make sure that we can, I don't know, cast a wider net to make sure that we're attracting more different types of businesses. Because when I think about government contracting, it's been a while since I've been in that space, but when I think about it, I think about businesses that are going to DC or Virginia or other areas, not necessarily having a sustainable, consistent, integrated footprint in this city because the customers are not here, they're somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's how can we cast a wider net and make sure that we're investing in 
businesses or supporting the foundational start of businesses that can be seen and connected here in the city of Bowie so that they can scale their footprint here and that we can reap the benefits of that as a municipality. And that's something that's on my mind a lot. So I don't necessarily know if you have a strategic plan there, but I want to know, is that something that you can adopt as a priority in the next coming year or the next coming years out? Because I think that's important because another statistic that you mentioned was that 70% 72% of your businesses are IT companies. And so when I think about IT companies, those are companies that are staying and integrating into a community, but it seems like you have a large focus on government contracting. So I'm trying to bridge that connection to make sure that we can have businesses that have a footprint in the city and that we're not in the, like I'm, I want to support entrepreneurs. I think it's important mm -hmm. that they impact the greater world, but I also want them to impact Bowie mm -hmm. so that we can reap the benefits of that too. So that's another thing that's top of mind. I'll give you a second to respond. But then the other thing that I'm thinking about is it seems like the BIC's main focus is really around sustainability. And part of the things that I've been noticing over the last couple of months is that there's a barrier to entry. So there are a number of different constituents and residents that want to establish businesses or are probably looking to make a pivot. Last year, we provided access to Coursera. A lot of people were starting to take courses. We were able to see the trends on what courses they were taking and what was garnering the most interest. So I also think about how can we support that barrier to entry for our constituents who are here that want to establish businesses that may not have the startup capital, that may not be able to pay for the certifications that cost thousands of dollars to be able to get the bigger contracts. How can we shift and focus on the barrier to entry as well as continuing to support the sustainability model that you have. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things yeah. that are top of mind for me. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can um, remember and go back and address just uh, some of the, but no, I, I, I hear you and, and it's, it's, it's something that's on my mind all the time. I, I am, we stress the, the government contracting piece of it because fortunately, or you can say, unfortunately, I don't know, you know whether the glass is half empty or the glass is half full, however you see it. We are in the Washington, D.C. area, and government contracting is an industry with all within itself, unlike any other part of the country. Um, and so you, um, as a business, um, it's, 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 a, it's a major industry that can help businesses create and generate wealth for the company. So. It, it continues to be a niche where we've been able to be a pioneer, a trailblazer, and so we want to continue that. However, um, we, within our strategic plan of how we are shifting and focusing and trying to make sure that we do address some of the concerns that you have of other industries and, and especially some industries that are a little that are still, as we consider what storefront based or even product based type of businesses located here in the city of Bowie, we are shifting and, and, and helping to have that fall up under our Innovate Bowie. So Innovate Bowie over the past several years have been a one day event. It's been just an event for people to come out, understand um, trends and things that are going on within the city and, and, and how you can start a business and, and investors and so forth. But in order to help businesses the different types of businesses or different industries um, is to is to extend and expand Innovate Bowie to be a year-long program. So we have actually um, been looking for additional funding in ways where we actually have what we consider an entrepreneur in residence that is focused on either product-based businesses, um, which will product-based businesses or businesses like we say probably like storefront type of businesses, but the strategies and the business plans and how you approach those businesses are different. And so having an entrepreneur and resident that is there for those businesses to come and seek that that guidance and mentorship and advice to to look at how to get that product to market and look at how to set up, even if it's if it's e-commerce, that's why the, the Innovate buoy thing this year is e-commerce, but that's a strategy within itself. And especially small businesses understanding every dollar they spend, even if it's if it's they're at home or home-based business at the time, it's still resources that you know they're spending. And you don't want them to spend those resources frivolously, right? You want them to be wise. There's strategies that are involved. There's research that needs to take place. 
And all of business owners need to understand how the market that they're serving, whether or not their product, someone's gonna buy it, what, what are the, the, the mechanisms to actually sell it, um, actually customer discovery, all of those things are valuable. And we are looking to grow Innovate Buoy and actually bring that un under that program. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So it, basically what you just described covers my concerns. I'm just gonna restate it in a concise manner to make sure that everybody understands my priority and my takeaway, which is one, making sure that we're casting a wider net to the types of businesses that we're supporting so that they can stay in the city of Bowie and also maintain an office and grow their operations in the city of Bowie so that we can reap the benefits of that. That's number one. Number two is addressing the barrier to entry of getting into entrepreneurship. So you talked about that with like product research, mm -hmm. value discovery, mm -hmm. sales funnels and life cycles and strategies and things like that, making sure that we're supporting the barrier to entry. So that's the wider net that we're casting on the types of businesses that we're supporting and mm -hmm. then also supporting the barrier to entry so that we can make entrepreneurship more accessible. Yes. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. June Evans, um, for, for your presentation. Um, there's, there, there's a saying that the entrepreneur's idea is to see what's missing mm -hmm. and right. to serve people the things that they need. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, what you guys are doing in your, in your partnerships with the university and so forth is excellent. Um, I, as a small business, as an entrepreneur, as a small business, um, um, myself in the city, I had a chance to experience uh, BIC in the early uh, 2000s, uh, around 2009, 10, and um, we were already a business in existence, so, um, but we needed the guidance, um, the, uh, how to scale up, how to um, 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 do projections, those things that, that um, it, 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 was, it was very enlightful and um, you know, 13 years later, we still in the city. So we we represent a part of that 30 percent that is still um, in the city and that is growing, and that we support you in, in, in any, any way that we can. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, thank you so very much for being here this evening, and we appreciate all you do. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. I did want to acknowledge the troop that was here earlier, but they're gone now, the Boy Scouts who were in. I, I think it's great they were in here working on their, uh, one of their merit badges, I guess, in civics and understanding that. And I think that's so important that our young people be engaged in what's going on in our, in our world and in our politics and understanding how our democracy works. But again, thank you to all of you for being here this evening. All right, we will now move on to the revision to a specific design plan, SDP 8945-08, uh, Turnberry. We'll turn it over to you, Jill Miner. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council Members. I'm Joe Miner, the City Planning Director, and this is a specific design plan revision for the Turnberry community, and it involves the 11 uh, remaining undeveloped lots within the subdivision. So it, as such, it's an infill development. Uh, the lots are located along Pensbury Drive. Uh, eight of the 11 lots front on Pensbury Drive and three of the lots front on Pengrove Court. Uh, there is a mixture of four townhouse units uh, proposed as well as uh, seven single-family detached units. Uh, this request is scheduled to go before the County Planning Board on June 22nd. Uh, in terms of the background of this case, Council, we did hold a stakeholders meeting on May 18th. We had a dozen stakeholders attending the virtual meeting. A lot of good questions were asked and answers provided. And then on, February, or on um, May 23rd, the Bowie Advisory Planning Board held a public hearing. And uh, at that time, we had three speakers. Uh, unfortunately, our chairperson, Mr. Michael Bird, is un unavailable tonight. He sends his regrets. But uh, he did want me to indicate that uh, the, the board held their hearing 
there were three people who spoke, uh, concerns about uh, the townhouse construction, also uh, impacts of the construction within the immediate neighborhood, and then trying to uh, see whether this development can go above and beyond in terms of providing innovative features, uh, is, which was the theme of the original subdivision uh, of the National Research Home Park. Um, <clears throat> in terms of our review of this case, uh, the this, this specific design plan revision is for the purpose of looking at uh, the architecture, the access, the house locations, and landscaping for the 11 dwelling units. Uh, the requirement for approval is to test whether the specific design uh, plan revision conforms to the approved comprehensive design plan and is in conformance with all of the regulations that apply. Uh, we conducted an analysis in the staff report uh, identifying a number of areas where we felt that architectural compatibility and development standards would benefit the project. In summary, Council, we recommend uh, approval of the specific design plan revision with 10 conditions that you see on pages five and six of the staff memorandum. Uh, I did want to mention that as part of the Bowie Advisory Planning Board's review, uh, there was an issue that was raised by one of the speakers concerning townhouse construction and whether there would be uh, separation between the units uh, from the ground level all the way up to the roof line. And that was an outstanding question that the applicant was going to provide additional information to you this evening. So it was a concern of the Advisory Planning Board that that issue be investigated uh, and addressed this evening. And with that, I would conclude the staff presentation. We recommend approval with the 10 conditions in the staff report. Thank you. Joe, if you don't mind, I'll ask you this because you kind of brought it up just now. And I know there was a concern with the roof line going all the way up. Somebody was concerned about if there was a fire and all of that. Are you saying that that has been addressed already? I believe the applicant w went back and talked to their architect, and they're going to provide an update to you this evening. Okay. All right. Okay. Why don't we proceed? Why don't you come on up? Introduce yourself. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, Edward Gibbs, an attorney with offices in Largo. And uh, I'm pleased to be here this evening representing AR Builders Incorporated, the contract purchaser of these lots. Um, Mr. Rutowski uh, is here this evening uh, on behalf of AR Builders, uh, and his father is, uh, who also has been in the business previously, is with him this evening. Our civil engineer, Mr. Uh, Pete Mellitz, is with us as well. Um, just a couple of preliminary comments. So I'm sure you are all familiar with Turnberry. Uh, it started in 1985 as the uh, National Research Home Park. Uh, in 1988, the William L. Berry Company became involved in the project and developed and built homes on a number of the lots, more so probably than the, uh, than the National Research Home Park uh, builders did. Um, and uh, there were, th this project went through all approvals and there were 11 lots that went through uh, comprehensive design plan, preliminary subdivision plan. They were included in a specific design plan but didn't have architecture. And then they were platted as final record platted lots, went through all the uh, adequate public facility standards, et cetera. So these 11 lots were always proposed to be built upon. As you come in off of Central Avenue, if you're headed west on Central, you take a right-hand turn uh, looking at the aerial, uh, come down Pensbury, and the, fir the first major circle that you see outlined in red is one of the 11 lots that has not been built upon. It is a single-family detached lot, and uh, the driveway will come out onto the circle as the other homes that exist within that circle uh, also access. Then as you come down uh, farther, uh, there are four townhouse lots, uh, all fronting on Pensbury. The three lots uh, farthest east 
will have driveways directly onto uh, Pensbury, and the westernmost lot will have an access onto the side uh, street, uh, just as the lots on the other side do. And then again, coming down farther, as Mr. Minor um, indicated, are six single family detached lots. Um, and uh, three will access onto Pensbury Drive, and the other three will access onto the court. There we go. Yeah. So those are the 11 lots. Um, <clears throat> the entitlement approval that's required is, to, is for my client to go back, do a revision to the specific design plan, the functional equivalent of a detailed site plan, to show all the uh, unique features, the architecture, you know, landscaping, parking, access, so forth. And that's you know, what we're in the process of doing. Uh, we, we did have a meeting with the uh, Turnberry HOA some time ago, the Board of Directors, uh, that we requested. And uh, then we subsequently had the stakeholders meeting on the 18th of May and the Advisory Planning Board on the uh, 23rd of May, I believe it was. And so we've appreciated that opportunity. Um, <clears throat> Joe, could you put up the architecture? Uh, we could go through that quickly. Okay, so we have two single family detached models, the Spruce and the Magnolia. Uh, so these are upgrades that we've, we've uh, done with the architecture for both of those uh, single family models. Um, the initial architecture that we submitted, were, it was a little more colorful and uh, really, didn't, uh, really, really didn't fit into the color palette of the community as it exists today. It's, an, it's really an exquisite neighborhood. Uh, when you drive in on Pensbury, you, you, know, you really, really get the sense of charm uh, of the neighborhood. And so my client thinks these uh, homes are going to be uh, very attractive and will uh, sell quickly. Um, so then we have the townhomes and we are going to change one additional item on the townhomes. As you see, those garages come straight out to the front plane of the house. The garage, the garage units, the garages are going to be staggered to provide uh, a, a variation of setbacks as you go across. There's only four of them. And all four of the townhouse units uh, will have bay windows and covered porches. They, they all did not have that. That's sort of the architecture in, uh, uh, with not colors. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the two middle units, one had a covered uh, porch for the front door, the other had a, a bay window. Um, all, will all four will have bay windows and all four will have covered porches. Uh, we have reviewed the staff report and, uh, uh, and we agree with each and every one of the conditions that your staff recommends. I think condition 1A was amended relative to the front, uh, the front building line. It should be 20 feet instead of 15. I think that Mr. Minor made that correction. Uh, so with that correction, we agree with all of the conditions recommended by your staff. Um, the, the townhouse architecture uh, is being revised as we speak. I don't think we have it completed yet. Uh, we hope to have it in the next couple of days, and we'll be happy to submit copies of that uh, to the city through your planning director. So with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, a couple of things. I know you said you've made the changes that were recommended. Now, um, were there any issues that were taken up uh, and I'll uh, address this to you. And Joe, if you could help me out, I, I'd appreciate it. From the HOA, uh, the current um, HOA, were there any issues that were brought up? I, I read through those and I saw, was there anything that was not addressed that was of any significance that impacted, uh, even if you needed to make any additional changes, Joe, or that you would recommend? From my perspective, I, I don't know whether you want Joe to speak first, but I, I have something to say. I, yeah. Okay, go ahead. You can go ahead. Please. Go oh, ahead. yeah. Uh, so the, the neighbors, 
particularly those living very close to these lots. Uh, they, they did express concerns uh, about things such as safety for children. Uh, would the construction sites have a fence around them to make sure there was no attractive nuisance? Um, hours of operation, uh, noise control. There's a noise standard, obviously, for construction work that we have to, to uh, conform to. Um, we, we had uh, agreed that we would meet with the neighbors and the city uh, to address those items, and in particular, hours of operation and days when construction could occur. Uh, those, were, those were all issues that uh, were raised and which we agreed to work with uh, the neighbors to address and to make sure they were satisfied with how we were addressing it. So from your perspective, those are things that you're looking to meet with the neighbors on, you've discussed it, and you all are going to work through that. Is that's, that cor that's correct. That's what that's you're saying? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Joe. And with the city, with Joe. And you will be meeting with him? So. Yes. Okay. Uh, Joe, go ahead. The other issue is the one that I mentioned earlier that the architect, they were going to go back and look at their architect or talk to the architect about this, the total separation between the buildings. And I believe they wanted to report to you tonight on that findings. Okay. I'd like to have my client come up and address that if I could, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Cause, cause one of the things I, I would say is, um, I'd like to know when you plan to meet with the community and when you will be doing that because we, we don't want to get too far down the road and not have that, that meeting. So do you have any expectation of how soon you'll be doing that? Well, our hearing before the planning board is June 22nd. Um, the items that were raised by the community were more life safety type of items. You know, how are you going to control trucks coming in to make deliveries of materials? Uh, how are you going to make the site safe? Until we have an approval, we really don't have anything. So as soon as we get through the planning board hearing, uh, it would be our intent to uh, address those issues with a, with a, a safety construction plan that we would propose and then meet with the citizens. So we're saying, you know, shortly after the June 22nd hearing. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm Albert AR Builders. Um, and I've spoken with the HOA members here. Um, we're a smaller builder, it's my dad and I. I told them all that, you know, with the safety concerns in this, I'll go around and pass out my card. They'll have my direct cell number. They can call me. Um, I'm on site myself all the time. So that should help, you know, to keep our site clean. We're, we do a really good job of sweeping the roads at the end of the day, making sure our contractors are out of there on time and, and don't start to a certain time. That way we can keep their, their lives nice and normal <laughs> as possible. And then, uh, so regarding the architect, I did have a meeting with my architect and uh, Pete and myself have kind of went through it. So to get a difference in the roof there, the, the best thing that we could do is stagger the, the homes. Um, Pete and I had talked about that. It does create an issue staggering the homes. Um, one for the homeowner, it does create extra maintenance uh, where they butt the siding. It, it can create a leak problem there. And then secondly, our setbacks and of the house, um, we, we're very tight on the setbacks and we're trying to give the buyers at least a little bit of a yard. And it, with one of the units being staggered, it, it will impede with that. Um, so we are, we're still thinking about it. We're trying to come up with some you know, ways we could do something maybe with the shingling to distinct it or, or something. Um, that way the homeowners will say, yeah, this is my roof. That's their roof. Okay. I'm not being a builder, uh, some of which that I have to I asked Joe to give me a little insight in on exactly how that will address those roof lines, if you understand my conundrum there of, of exactly how that will work, because it sounds like you're really still just trying to figure it out at this point. Yeah. Okay. I, 
I mean, from, from a fire protection standpoint, the construction will meet all the fire codes. The question just was trying to create some demark demarcation between those two middle units. And, uh, you know, I, I think from a life sa safety standpoint, it won't be a problem. Uh, I think from the perspective of the future homeowners wanting to know where their roof ends and another starts, uh, that's a different issue, and that's what he's trying to address. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council members, any? I just want to say thank you to the residents for coming out, and uh, thank you to the applicants for doing this work. Um, uh, just in my neighborhood, right next door to us, we had 25 new homes go up. Uh, where the approvals were like done back in the early 2000s and there was no heads up or anything and I had a bunch of neighbors who were ready to uh, beat me up because they were like, Estav, you did this to us. And I'm like, I didn't even know this was happening. The approvals were like 2002. Um, and so it sounds like that's the case here. Uh, there are some instances where we are able to, you know, when a, 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 a prospective property owner wants to come in to buy property to build on it, or we're able to say no because either the city controls a portion of the property or they want annexation. There are situations where, you know, we can do something about it to try and preserve green space. But in cases where a property owner already owns it and it's already zoned that way, our hands are really limited and we're tied. And so it sounds like a lot of the conversation we're having now is just limited to making sure this particular builder is doing everything they can to maintain public safety, to limit you know, noise and disturbances for the existing residents. But I just want to clarify that. I totally get nobody likes losing green space. We're losing a ton of it near me right now. It's unpleasant. I don't love it. But um, in this particular case, this land is already owned. They, they've got the zoning to do uh, what they need to do. Um, and uh, having watched the stakeholders meeting and heard from the many folks who are involved in this project, I mean, it seems like they're going to do everything above board. There's a lot of construction that goes on in already built areas all the time. It's extremely uncommon that people get hurt. I grew up in a neighborhood where every home, except for like three, were in the middle of construction. There weren't any fences or anything. We were, we were fine. We walked through some of those homes um, growing up. Uh, so I don't, I don't have any doubts there, uh, but I just wanted to kind of restate for, for folks kind of where we are with this, and I do appreciate residents coming out, and I appreciate the applicant's time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At this time, yeah, at, at this time, because the, the process is, uh, we will now open public hearing, correct? Well, at this point, I did not have anybody sign up to speak. If you, Mayor, if it's up to Council. If you would like to let her address, I could have her sign up real quick. Okay, let's do that. And if I didn't say it at this time, I would like to now open the public hearing. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, um, council members, city staff, and Bowie residents. My name is Kimberly Gamble. And you can you pull the mic over a little closer to you if you'd like. Whatever okay. works for you. Um, my name is Kimberly Gamble, and I live in Turnberry. Specifically, I live on Pensbury, directly across the street from the lot in question. Um, I've been a resident of Bowie for about 23 years. Um, and one of the things that I prided myself on was the fact that our community was just that. It was a community. Um, we had some green space. We had families. Um, just a very nice, calm, quiet neighborhood. And now all of a sudden, we have um, our calmness being threatened and being taken away because we're going to have all of these construction elements coming through. Um, we're gonna have these houses being built that I don't feel we were given ample opportunity to voice our concerns about. Um, and there are homes being built all around us. And so we're trying to figure out why 
our particular neighborhood when there are homes being built off of Central Avenue 214, homes built up and down 301, um, and we don't see any infrastructure being associated with the expansion of the residence. Um, 301 has become a congested highway ever since they built the new homes on 301. And we don't see any plans for expanding 301 to accommodate the new. So how are we going to accommodate even just the 11 homes that are being built directly in our community? And then on top of that, we don't have grocery stores. We used to have a grocery store um, in the Pointer Ridge Plaza. It is now a sky zone. But we have to travel just to get to conveniences like a grocery store. Different things we feel that we're not being taken care of as Bowie residents. And we pay a pretty penny as far as property taxes, but we're not seeing any returns on that. Like our living space, our homes, we're not seeing returns on what we are paying for. Um, and so just to put more homes in our area, kind of crowding us out, it's almost being forced. It's not, we don't see any benefit for everyone, only one-sided. And we feel that this expansion is definitely one directional. It is not in the best interest of the community. Is that, that it? I'm Ms. Freeman. Ms. Freeman, you need to get up to the mic, please. Okay. I have been a member and a resident of Tanbury and Bowie for 25 years. Uh, I love my community, and I see some problems with your design here. First of all, if you're going to build those townhouses on uh, Pensbury Drive, there is a fire hydrant, hydrant along the path and there's no way, there's no indication of how you're going to deal with it. Plus, they, the builders have said that they're going to enter one side of the town, of the in town house from the street of Presidio. And that doesn't seem to be feasible because there is also a parking lot there, a stop sign, and it just doesn't reflect it in your drawing how you're going to place those townhouses on Pensbury Drive. And another thing I would like to suggest is that maybe if you would display the current houses that are two level versus the ones that you are planning on building so that we could possibly see the contrast between what you plan to build and what is already there. And that could also indicate the single family homes along that, that plot where you're planning on building the single family homes. Show us the homes that are there compared to the ones that you plan on posting there. And that's all I would like to suggest, okay? Thank you. Okay, with that, I would now like to declare. Oh. I'm sorry. What else Excuse me. Could you please minimize the disruption? If you could, you, you have to speak to minimize. us. Could you please minimize the disruption that we will have in our community? Because right now it is really quiet and very peaceful. And people walk up and down the streets with their dogs and just for, um, it's just an ideal place to live and we'd like to keep it that way. And as clean as possible, we would appreciate it. I'd like to thank, thank you. you. Okay. All right. Okay, and this is it. Go ahead. Um, hello, Mayor Hi. and um, Town Hall. Actually, I'll do, okay, this is my first time of ever actually uh, just attending something like this. Um, so my name is Adjoa Kessie. And I live on 8 on 
809 Penn Grove Court. So, so please, I'm um, one of the single um, okay, family homes there. And if you see the design of the current homes there right now, and the plans that were shown, they are completely different. So I really have concerns about, not to say that, okay, looking at the plans that I've seen, compared to the house that I currently live in, which is very, very, very unique. And the neighbors here would actually say that too as well. And then really just introducing a house like this, which doesn't look that bad, but compared to the house that is currently there, there's a big difference. We are concerned about home values going down. We are concerned about the noise. I have a feeling that this was actually pushed on us that we didn't really have a chance being so busy with work and everything else. Nobody really in my circle has even joined this, um, okay, 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 joined this meeting. So, um, okay, um, so I'm really concerned about this development that is going on. I just wanted to, to share that. I've never showed up at a town, a town hall before, but I felt as if I have to come and say something tonight. So thank you. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to declare the public hearing closed. Okay, and council members, any comments, questions? Because if not, I will go right ahead. And uh, the, the concern I'm hearing is that several members, the real issue I think I'm hearing is number one, making sure that the, the, the models, the things that I thought I heard you say you've addressed on how they would blend in with the rest of the community are, are being worked. And secondly, and it's something that I totally understand, is about safety and the noise factor of new construction in the area. I, I think those are the two main things that, that I'm taking for this. And I think some of that could very well be resolved if you did have a meeting. I understand the timing that you're looking at, on, on trying to get this done uh, because you want approval prior to going before the county council. I'm, I'm assuming that's correct. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Edward Gibbs again. The hearing on the 22nd is before the planning board. Mm -hmm. And then obviously in a detailed site plan case, uh, either the district council can call the case up or any party of record right. can appeal. So we face the prospect of still going before the district council after the planning board hearing. Um, we, we don't have, you know, it's June 6th, 5th, it's June 5th today. I mean, we, we'll be happy to meet with the folks uh, as quickly as they would like to do so. Uh, we believe the architecture uh, is compatible. Uh, we have worked with both Mr. Minert and with the planners at the Urban Design Division of the Park and Planning Commission to make improvements uh, so that they would be more compatible. Uh, Mr. Ratowski has been driving through the neighborhood um, many, many times, making sure that what he's proposing to build will be compatible with what's out there already. In general, his homes that he's proposing to build uh, from what we heard at the advisory planning board, his homes are larger and his estimated uh, starting sales price is higher than the homes that are presently out there. That at least was what we were told from uh, one or two people who testified at the advisory planning board hearing. So uh, I, I think Mr. Rutowski is really making a very solid effort to do something that's going to be a positive addition to the community and certainly not a detraction. Oh, you want to go ahead. So, I'll try to make the best of my comments. I'm a little taken aback by this development, mainly because, so this development is in District 4, and I represent District 4, and I don't recall ever having a conversation with you guys or just really even understanding what it is that you're trying to do here. And so, I think sometimes it's helpful when you guys come before us to kind of reach out to the council members to make sure that we're informed so that we can understand what you're trying to do and also advocate for the needs of the community, which I don't 
really feel like was done here, which is a little confusing. Um, and I understand that you went through your proper channel, your channels, because I can kind of see your face. I'm getting a reaction from you, but I know that you talk to city staff and other members, but I guess when I look at this on the map, which is what I was doing and asked my council member just for clarification, it just, I don't know, like this area, like it, it just seems like, I don't know how I feel about this addition. And I understand, like I'm very respectful of private landowners and the property that you own, I get it. I'm very much respectful of that, but this seems like a very, it seems like a lot to add to a small parcel of land, like it, it, from what I'm observing in this. Now, I'm also understanding that I might not be fully informed because I've never had a conversation with you guys and you've never reached out. So I can understand that I might not be as fully informed here, but it just gives me pause when I look at the map and hear what you're trying to do. I, I just have pause and concern. And so, I do feel like it would be helpful for you guys to have a meeting with the HOA and for the community and really hear their concerns and work through their concerns and work with them on the concerns. I'm not saying that you haven't proactively tried to do that because I'm not as informed. I don't know what you've tried to do so far, um, but it sounds like there's still hesitancy from the community and there's pause and concerns. And it also seems like based off of the community members that have shown up today, they also don't feel heard either. That, that's just what I'm, I'm gathering from this assessment. So I do believe that it would be in the best interest of the applicant to, and to have that conversation with the community and possibly like maybe give us more details to understand a little bit more. I understand that you have this fancy presentation and it's great with a lot of words and very um, informative, but it's always helpful to have a conversation and be able to have a dialogue and ask questions to understand the ins and outs and the totality and the entirety of what you're trying to do and making sure that it meets the needs of our community so that we can be the proper advocates that we've been elected to be. So that, those are my thoughts at this time. I, I would like to see you guys have a meeting with the community. That would be my preference. Be nice if you could loop me into that so that I could attend and be there and also learn more and make sure that I can support in my capacity. But that, those are my thoughts for today. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're but thank you for coming out. We really yeah, appreciate it. I, 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 I do want to reiterate, we reached out to the HOA ourselves um, several months ago, and we had a meeting with the board of directors, uh, a virtual meeting, but we had a meeting with the board of directors uh, before we ever got to the stakeholders meeting, before we ever got to the advisory planning board. And I will add that both at that meeting and at the advisory planning board meeting and maybe the stakeholders meeting, there are residents of Turnberry who said, yeah, we knew these were lots. Yes, we always expected these were gonna be built. Somebody said it might be 30 years and it has been 30 years, but it's happening. So not everyone is surprised in Turnberry that these lots are gonna be built upon. Um, but I'll be happy to schedule a meeting with the residents next week if they would like to do that, that's fine. And also, just let me follow up really quickly, mm -hmm. and I appreciate sure. your response and your comments. Yeah. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily, I guess from me, what I'm observing, I don't necessarily think anybody's surprised per se, because it's private property. So, I mean, there's always a certain level of expectation that something will happen with private property. Mm -hmm. So whether that stays as it is, or whether it becomes something else because it's owned by an individual or an entity. So I'm not necessarily sure that, that it's shocking that something is happening as opposed to the involvement of the community and the partnership that is needed, because this is a very intimate community. This is not a large parcel of land that's in a remote industrial area that is surrounded with a whole bunch of green space. This is a very close knit property with multiple houses surrounding this community. Like it's just very tight. And so I think it would have been nice to have that conversation with the surrounding community that's immediately surrounding this parcel of land. And I understand you did your due diligence by talking to the board of the HOA's board of directors, but for me, that's not enough because that's just the board director's entities. And I don't have the level of, it's not trust, but that doesn't always trickle down. And I'm realistic about that. And so it's clear that it didn't trickle down because you have community members here that we're not engaged in that process. I'm not saying that's your fault. Could be nuances and communication channels with the HOA, I don't know. However, 
what I'd like to see is the rest of the community members, not just the leaders or the entities or the board entities, but the actual neighbors that will be surrounding this parcel of land engaged in this process so that they can have a better partnership with you and so that their concerns are heard, seen, and understood, and you make sure that you alleviate those concerns so that you can find a way to go forward with the support of the community or let them decide whether they support it or they don't support it. But I think there's a certain level of proactivity that I'd like to see that maybe just at a, a higher level to have that level of engagement with even myself because I, I just find it shocking when developers or representatives come up here and they're doing things and they're in our backyard and it's a constituency that I represent and it's a little frustrating because I'm hearing the concerns of my community I'm hearing yours but because that conversation hasn't happened and it wasn't bridged it's just kind of it's kind of counterproductive the way that we're having it now because the solution will not be reached tonight because they haven't been involved and engaged and so that's what I'd like to see I totally respect that you followed your appropriate channels but I think what I'm trying to set the precedent of is I'd like to see developers or representatives be a little bit more proactive I'm not saying that you're not being proactive but I have a higher level of expectation for this community be a little bit more proactive just so you make sure that you foster a certain level of partnership and integration with the community that will immediately surround your parcel. Thank you. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at this time, what action is required of us, Joe? Well, this is in the form of a recommendation to the county planning board. Their hearing is going to be on the 22nd. Uh, their staff report is being written this week and my understanding was with their staff that we'd like to try to get the City Council's position statement to them this week but uh, as I said the hearing is not until the 22nd okay so at this point we're we won't have another council meeting prior to that correct and so there is a council meeting on June 20th Okay. So we could potentially look at making sure that you have the meeting and then um, take it up uh, with the HOA and with the residents is, is a thought I'm having. I'm, I'm open that. Council members, I'm really getting, looking for your feedback. Mr. Mayor, I think what I would propose, I know this might be a little extra, but I want to give them an opportunity to, to do that, what we're, what we're recommending. So I'd be open to a special meeting. I understand that might be a little bit more effort for other council members to, and staff. So I would be open to a special council meeting um, prior to the 22nd to give them the opportunity to meet with the HOA and the surrounding community members to come back before council to have this conversation. But I do feel like we're at a kind of like a crossroads because the county council's meeting on the 22nd, the 20th, it's just not enough time. So I kind of feel like the only other option might be a special meeting. Well, I, I think that's a question being the 20th, uh, we would have potentially the letter or whatever we would be sending over. Go ahead. Um, the 20th would be plenty of time for us to react uh, to, to whatever decisions you all make and, and get, those, get the documentation forward. So there's, from our perspective, there's no need for a special meeting, but we can always accommodate. So we would be able to get that information done within the, on the 20th and for that next day for the 21st to get over there by 22nd? Yes, sir. Easy. There's no problem. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Um, my question is from Mr. Gibbs. The 20th to the 22nd, do you have any concern there? Do you have any feedback? From my perspective, I'm happy to come back on the 20th. From your perspective, there is a deadline to get written documents in before the planning board, and I don't think that's going to give you enough time. Oh, we're, we're, we're thinking that our folks can get that over there in a day, can turn that around. Is that correct, Joe? Well, we would have to give the report verbally at the meeting. I, I can sign up to speak in advance, and I can present your recommendation verbally. Um, I think Mr. Gibbs is right that there's a cutoff date. I think it's with 48 hours or something prior to the hearing that hmm. they won't take any written testimony. Any written. Correct. Right. 
But we made verbal presentations before, Mr. Mayor. I, I couldn't hear you. We made, we made verbal presentations before. We could do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can certainly, Joe, or whoever you designate, can sign up and give a verbal recommendation uh, to the planning yeah, I, board. I, 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 my, from my feeling, I think we need to make sure that we bring the two of the, the community <coughs> and you together one more time. Uh, I, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's just a matter of just talking a little more, making sure there's a, a comfort zone there. I don't believe there's a real disconnect, but I, I would like to see that, that uh, something a little more harmonious, <coughs> a little more harmony in, in talking and going through that. So if you could do that and we could and come back on the 20th and we could look at having uh, a verbal uh, sure. Representation. Yeah, we're happy. I think that would be the best at this time. We're happy to come back on the 20th. I would ask this. Who do you want me to reach out to? Because I can take the, the names of whoever here would like to give me their name, and I can offer a meeting time to them. Ask, but, but that's no guarantee that – because there were people who testified at advisory right. planning board. They're not here tonight. Let, let, let me tell you what I, what I would say to you, as just, and it's just my recommendation, is that you do that. You have people who are here. You get their information and all. You make sure you reach back out to the um, HOA and others and let them know to talk to their community and then just try and do and then you've really done you've gone above and beyond on your due diligence of doing that but you have people here who have uh, uh, thoughts on it that you can talk to directly as well who are saying they're directly being impacted and didn't really get a chance to voice that I just ask you to do that absolutely and I think Happy. that would work for for everyone to be able to do that and then we come back on the 20th and then go from there Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I would, I would ask that you reach out to council, the, the city council, and let us know when you're going to have that. Of course. Because we may want to sit in just to, to be a part of that. Of course. In the district sure. and all, okay? Sure. All right. Sounds thank good. you. Hey, thank you, and thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming out. And thank you to the citizens as well for coming out. All right. We now move on to the Bowie Golf Course update. Are you guys still awake? <laughs> I hope they're on too early a tea time tomorrow because uh, you may be at it. And again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, the city entered into a new management uh, agreement with Indigo Sports for the operation of the city's golf course. So it's been about a year and a half. And uh, during our uh, budget work sessions this spring, uh, there was an interest in getting an update of what's happening uh, at the course. Uh, so I took the opportunity to invite uh, Justin Smith from uh, Indigo Sports. He's joined by TJ and Joe. He'll introduce all of them and love to give you a little update of what's happening at the Bowie Golf Club. All righty. Thank you. Uh, good, evening, uh, good evening, council members, Madam uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I am Justin Smith, Vice President of Operations with Indigo Sports and Troon. Uh, on behalf of our, uh, our team at Bowie Golf Club, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, tonight. Uh, with me tonight is TJ Basil, our General Manager at Bowie Golf Club, and Joe Tubiolo, our Golf Course Superintendent. And he's the one that has to get up early tomorrow. So. Um, so tonight, uh, we really uh, have a couple, um, seven key uh, areas that we wanted to focus on for updates. Uh, first and foremost, and uh, Daniel uh, touched on it, is our partnership with the city of Bowie. Uh, then next, uh, we wanted to cover some uh, the improvements that the city of Bowie has funded at the golf course thus far. Uh, the next uh, are operationally funded improvements that have happened at the golf course that have been funded through the operations. Uh, and then uh, a really important part is the uh, results that we've seen at the business uh, through the first 18 months of our partnership with the city. Uh, and then we'll follow that up with an update uh, on the community aspect uh, of our operation and how we've, we've, we've uh, grown that. Uh, and then Joe will provide a, a golf course update on, uh, on the conditions of the golf course and the things that he's done to improve it. And then finally, we'll provide an update on marketing. 
Um, for those of you that were uh, not here uh, in November of 2021, um, the city of Bowie put out an RFP for management of the golf course in the spring of 2021. Uh, a vendor was selected. Unfortunately, negotiations for the contract fell through. So we were brought in uh, on November 1st, 2021 to manage the golf course on the city's behalf. Uh, the agreement is five years. Uh, with the opportunity for the city to uh, exercise a five-year extension, should you wish. Uh, we have uh, enjoyed a really great relationship thus far with the city. Uh, we work very closely with city staff, uh, and we feel that our partnership is, is very great. Uh, so looking at improvements uh, to the golf course that have been funded uh, through city uh, funding. Uh, State-of-the-art golf course irrigation system is, is a project that I'm happy to say is completed, probably not as happy as Joe. Um, that uh, started in earnest in December of 2022 and with a, uh, or thanks to a non-existent winner, they were able to complete the project in April of 2023. It was uh, truly remarkable uh, the speed in which that project was done. Uh, the old system was old, antiquated, uh, outlived its useful life. And now what we were able to do uh, is, is really fine tune our watering of the golf course. And, and that really achieves three things. It achieves better golf course conditions for our, our guests. Uh, it reduces labor, uh, which is important for a business, especially uh, for a municipal golf course. Uh, and then most importantly, it allows us to conserve water because we're not uh, just uh, spraying water uh, haphazardly uh, throughout the, the, the evening and, and daytime hours. So uh, that project is completed. Uh, it will be uh, a project or a, a system that will last for at least 40 years. So uh, it will outlive most of us, which is, is great to see. Uh, the next thing that we're working on is a state-of-the-art driving range. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if anyone has ever been to a Top Golf type facility, but that's our vision at Bowie. Uh, 32 uh, stalls, uh, hitting area for golfers. Uh, it will be lit uh, and have technology, food and beverage service, uh, as well as an outdoor hangout area with some fire pits. It's a, it's a really nice concept. It's in design phase right now. Uh, we believe that it's going to really appeal to city residents, both golfers and non-golfers alike, um, because it's really, our goal is to make golf fun and, and we feel that this type of a setup uh, lends itself to that well. Um, next is a, a new golf course maintenance building, which is also in the design and architectural phase. Uh, this isn't as flashy as the driving range, uh, but it's no less important. And if anyone has seen the, the, the building in which Joe and his team work out of now, uh, this will be a significant improvement. Uh, it will protect new golf course equipment, which we have uh, on order and arriving, but it will also provide a safe place for our team uh, to work in. So we're, we're excited about that as well. And then the last one we wanted to highlight was tree work. Continual tree work is in progress. Uh, city staff and our team have identified a need to have continual tree improvement and tree work for the, on the golf course for safety and also turf health. So the city is committed to, to continuing that on an ongoing basis. We've also, uh, because the, the, the operations, and we'll hear about the financial results here in a second uh, when I ask TJ to come up, um, through those, those beneficial and positive uh, financial results that we've seen, we've been able to fund many improvements through the operations of the golf course. So it has not been funded through city uh, funds whatsoever. Uh, and this list is certainly not uh, exclusive. There's, there's multiple things that are, could be added to this, but these are the highlights. Uh, we added 75 new golf cart carts to the golf course, which was uh, very welcomed by, by our guests. Uh, a new range cart, uh, a new beverage cart, which allows us to provide food and beverage service on course to our, our golfers that are playing. Uh, four new utility carts for our staff. Uh, we have new maintenance equipment. I mentioned, sorry, I mentioned that uh, earlier. We're waiting delivery. Supply chain has caused a significant delay in that. We've received some pieces, uh, but we're awaiting the majority of it. Uh, next is a state-of-the-art uh, point-of-sale system. We've completed that install cloud-based system, which allows us to really pinpoint and track golfers and their behavior at Bowie so that we can pinpoint marketing uh, and whatnot to them. Uh, we've also added new technology to the property, including new VOIP phones, tablets, networking throughout all the facilities. And this off-season, our team found some time in between rounds of golf to paint the interior, uh, which has helped spruce it up a little bit. 
And I'm going to uh, invite TJ because these are really his results uh, to talk about some of the results through the first 18 months. Good evening, Mayor, council members, city staff. All right, so some of the results through the first 18 months. Uh, rounds of golf, total rounds were 52,711. Uh, public rounds were 33,000. Uh, resident, uh, buoy resident rounds were 11,000. Outing rounds were 2,500. Um, revenue was 1.7 mil. Uh, out of that 1.7 mil, greens fee and cart fees were 1.4 of it. Uh, food and beverage was slow to open, but after we secured the liquor license, uh, it opened a little after Memorial Day, and that's done 100,000. Uh, Pro Shop merchandise has done 59,000. Balls, hats, uh, apparel, tees. Memberships have done 100,000, um, and range fees with 35K. Uh, the modern membership, so, if you're not a resident of the city of Bowie, uh, you pay $50 a month. If you're a resident of the city of Bowie, you pay $30 a month, and then you get a discounted rate on golf. Um, so during the week is 20 bucks, weekends is 25. If you walk, it's even a little bit cheaper than that. Uh, we've sold 1,400 memberships since the start of the program in February of 2022. Um, during peak season, we usually have about 250 monthly uh, members. Uh, off season is about a hundred and about 40% of the members are residents. Uh, the EBITDA numbers uh, for 22 and 23, uh, in 22, uh, it was only about seven months. Uh, we were budgeted to lose about 32,000. Uh, we actually gained 52, you know, a difference of 85,000. Um, FY 23 so far, we're budgeted to gain 81. And we're projected to do about 157,000, so also a difference of $76,000 to the good. Uh, the community update, right? So junior programs, um, if we don't have the junior programs, golf doesn't grow. Uh, in 2022, we held PGA junior camps. Uh, we had about 60 kids. Um, they're expected to have a little bit more this year. Uh, other junior programs that we offer are youth on course, uh, Excel Golf Group, which is a Bowie-based program, and junior memberships. Uh, they can pay 250 for the year um, and walk anytime after 12 for free uh, after they pay that membership. Also, we offer children 15 and under are free with a paying adult. So one adult, if the kid's under 15, they're free to play. City residents uh, working for us. We currently have 15 employees that live within city limits. Um, and we also have just started a partnership with Bowie State. Uh, they are trying to get a golf team up and running and off the ground. And we've offered to let them use the golf course. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe for the course update. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, uh, when we got there, 2021, it uh, wasn't the greatest thing I've ever seen, but uh, we've been able to uh, kind of bring the place around. We have a long way to go, but uh, we do overseed in the winter uh, with uh, ryegrass. It is a Bermuda golf course, the tees and the fairways. So it this, this golf course requires overseeding, and it's done really well. Um, we've increased, you know, greens aerations, the spray programs, all these things are uh, cultural, practices um, that we've kind of up the, you know, we've upped our game on it or up the game at the golf course. And we've seen some really great results so far. Um, I think uh, we've, um, uh, the conditions have improved overall. I mean, it's been uh, uh, coming out, coming out of winter this year, has been, it's been pretty good and uh, pretty happy so far going into the summer. Um, we started updating just the course supplies, the tees, uh, you know, the flag sticks, the flags, all these things, they were all just old and, you know, it was time to update. Um, things we may update in the future might be the T signs. There are signs on every hole, you know, it says hole number 15. Uh, we, we probably will update these in the future. Um, they're kind of out of date there. 
Um, and we, we've retained a lot of existing employees. So when we got there, there were most of the guys that were there, we've retained. And uh, uh, they all do a good job. And uh, so we're, it, it, you know, with the new irrigation system and everything, it's given us time to focus on a lot of little things instead of having, it was taking four guys every day to go around and try to water the golf course. Now, for the most part, it's done at night. We do some during the day, but it doesn't take a team of people to do it. So it lets us focus on the, uh, a lot of the detail work, just a lot of tree limbing, just all this stuff. Um, I love trees, but they just kind of, if they were just planted kind of haphazardly out there, and it's, there's a lot of trimming, a lot of, there's a lot of dead wood out there, that stuff needs to come down. And uh, um, then we've also cleaned up a lot of the planting beds and stuff. Some of, the, some of the stuff just didn't make sense. And uh, so we took a lot of that old stuff out just because it, it's opening things up and just you can, you know, give it a better view of the whole place. So, but uh, overall things are much better uh, than when I got there. And uh, it's a nice piece of property. And uh, I, think, I think we can continue to uh, improve it. Okay, thank you. And then uh, quickly wanted to provide an update uh, from a marketing perspective. Uh, we've really, uh, we're unfortunate that we didn't have much to start with when we began operations at, at, at Bowie, uh, but it also allowed a clean slate for us to, to really do what uh, we wanted and worked closely with city staff to come up with some really great things, such as the logo, which we think turned out great, uh, and we've utilized it on all of our, our apparel uh, and our marketing collateral. Uh, we've highlighted here some of the things that our marketing team has done, and we have a team that, that does this um, solely. Uh, our reviews have been outstanding through all the, the channels. Uh, Bowie has a 3.92 star rating across all channels out of four, which is great. Uh, we have a proprietary app um, that Bowie has. They've had almost 1,100 downloads so far uh, and $400,000 of revenue associated with the app through sales uh, on, through the online channels and the online booking mechanism that's there. And then we, uh, we've obviously, we're continuing to grow uh, our Facebook and, and Instagram uh, accounts respectively. Um, so I, I think the, ultimately, uh, the one thing I wanted to highlight before closing, uh, the city was uh, contractually required to fund the operation $50,000 when we started in November of 2021. We have not asked for any additional funding since that time. In fact, we have a significant surplus uh, in the bank, which uh, in a municipal space and operation, that's a really good thing. Uh, municipal golf courses, uh, unfortunately, have tended to struggle in the past, uh, and the things that we're seeing at Bowie uh, are, are frankly um, very exciting for our company, uh, and we're really excited with the projects uh, that, are, that are happening, have happened, or continue to progress towards happening. And again, just reiterate that the, the relationship with city staff has been outstanding. So thank you very much. Any questions, comments, we're certainly open. I do have a couple of things. First, it sounds like things are going um, pretty good, all things considered. You know, it was a, a hard dilemma for us how we would, what we would do, how we would do it. But it seems like uh, the operations are going pretty smoothly from the feedback we get as well from city staff. That seems to be the case. Uh, the, the one thing I would, would say to you, and ask you, and, and it's, I'm an advocate, about accessibility mm -hmm. to the course. You know, I'm one who played golf even after I had my accident and had an accessible golf court and those kind of things. So I would like you to continue to look at that and see how you can make the course accessible to all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, yeah, we feel you. very strongly about that as well. Uh, we have a, a, a policy within our company uh, that if someone were to call that requires uh, an accessible golf cart, for example, uh, we will do that no matter what with 48 hours notice. Okay. Um, we also have golf courses that purchase those golf carts outright. Uh, I believe that the city of Bowie Golf Club uh, probably is a good candidate for that as well. But uh, we, we make sure that it's known if you call us uh, in 48 hours, we will have a golf cart yeah, available. Because candidly, I bought my own and I left okay. it at the club. Sure. You know, that's what I would do. So Absolutely. Uh, but, but continue to do that because it goes to the restrooms and, and all of the things that go along with that. You know, Certainly. Uh, as you talk about the, the 
the course itself and what's available where, but uh, I just wanted to make sure we do that. But uh, I, uh, again, I, I think very highly of how things are going. Uh, thank you. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the Mayor Pro Tem. Hi there, good evening. Hi. Thank good you evening. so much for coming out. This is very exciting. I'm a golfer, so I absolutely love all things sure. golf. Great. Um, so my question is, well, one, I want to say just really great job on what you guys have done since you've come in. This is a great partnership and just really thrilled with how you've managed the operations, how you've been inclusive for our residents. I remember in the beginning, a lot of people were fearful on whether they'd be able to kind of still maintain the same type of relationship and experience that they had under the previous leadership. So really, really great job transitioning and making them feel in, in, like they're having an enjoyable experience. Thank That's you. been awesome. My question is around the revenue generation aspect of it. How are you thinking about the clubhouse and other things that drive more interest or enjoyment or experiences at the golf course to potentially look at how we can drastically increase the revenue stream there? Certainly, yeah, great question. Uh, we believe that the driving range uh, that I believe City Council has at least seen a little bit of that design, uh, that will, uh, we'll say, take Bowie to the next level. Um, I don't want to make projections here because it's probably not appropriate, but uh, it would certainly uh, provide an additional revenue stream that the golf course has never had. Uh, and, and frankly, uh, it's a, a way of getting new people into the game. You know, as, as a golfer, you know, we don't start on the golf course. We start on the driving range, right? So um, this is going to be that perfect opportunity to get people into the game. So it's also a feeder uh, mechanism into uh, residents and, and non-residents playing golf as well. Okay, so if I understand correctly, the immediate focus is really on the drive range, the driving range, and kind of like making sure that that becomes a little bit more robust and changes the experience. But how are you, I guess? providing a recreational experience for those who do come to the golf course, but maybe hang out and spend money on in other areas as opposed to being on the driving range or just playing around themselves. Certainly, yeah, so the, the driving range will have a food and beverage component um, and, and an outside area with fire pits that we envision uh, being that hangout spot uh, for people as well as an opportunity to spend money on, on food and beverage as well. Uh, we recognize, and I believe city staff and council that spend there recognizes the clubhouse uh, something needs to happen there. Uh, there's some hurdles with it being a historic building. So uh, we would love to, to do something there. And I know there's discussion about uh, making some improvements in, in there. But we believe that the driving range vision uh, and design really achieves almost everything that you're, you're, you're asking about. OK, that's wonderful. And last question is around just forward looking. How are you thinking about community engagement? Are you doing, do you have, are you projecting to do like more events, to have more tournaments? Are you looking at like corporate partners to kind of have events and things like that there? And then also, will you be doing more like community like gathering things to get the community that's already in Bowie to participate more with spending time on the golf course? Yes, <laughs> yeah, all of that. Um, so a big focus of TJ's has been on growing the event side of the business. Uh, we understand that that wasn't necessarily a, a large component uh, of the previous lessee. Uh, so we've grown that to 2,500 outing rounds uh, in the first 18 months. And the interest, TJ, has been uh, outstanding uh, in that category. But our focus is on growing uh, the community and our, our ties to the community. Uh, TJ talked about the partnership with Bowie State. They're starting a golf team, which is awesome. We can't wait to get them out there uh, for that as well. But you know, we are part of the community. A golf course has got homes around it, uh, which is a community as well. But um, we are focused on, on junior golf. We're focused on uh, getting as many people to the facility as possible. And they don't have to be golfers. So we're also going to bring instruction uh, to the facility, which hasn't, we haven't been able to have. Um, with the new range, we believe that that's going to bring that as well. And uh, you know, we, we have a team that's dedicated to, to, to working with the communities and being tied in. Can I just ask you one more question? Because you sure. said something that inspired a thought. Mm -hmm. 
you're an industry leader in this space. So I'm curious on your thoughts. Are you doing anything to really expose um, children or younger individuals to the sport? Because I remember growing up, I, I played sports like softball, soccer, and track, but I was never exposed to golf because it was, it was from a minority community, maybe a little bit more expensive, we couldn't afford it. So what are you doing or if you're doing anything or how are you thinking about kind of increasing the exposure to certain communities that haven't traditionally been exposed to the sport? Sure, yeah, well the, the, the most important thing that we've done um, historically is partner with the First Tee. Uh, we have a relationship with, I believe it's 60 chapters of the first tee across the United States. Uh, and, and that is important because it does bring exposure to golf, but it also teaches life lessons. It's a, it's a great program. So we are exploring that at Bowie Golf Club to, to make sure that we have a, a partnership there with them. Uh, we do a lot on the junior front. First and foremost, it's, it's important to get the juniors out. The way you do that a lot of times is get the parents out. And, and so uh, whatever we can do with our kids play free program that we have, any kid that's 15 and under plays free with a paying adult, um, you know, the junior instruction uh, that we have, summer camps, um, just getting kids to the golf course is the most important thing. We have a month dedicated to specifically juniors where they can come out and enjoy the golf course for free. Uh, that was actually the month of May. And uh, we do that as company wide as well. Thank you for that. May I just offer a thought of something to think about going forward? Um, I know I'll speak on District 4. There are a lot of children or under 21 year olds whose parents may not always be home or not always active because they're working or they work for the federal government or things of that sort. So it'd be interesting to see if there's a way that we can get them engaged and you know maybe get them on the golf course and expose them to the sport because there are a lot of scholarship opportunities out there for kids who play golf and looking to go to college and things like that. So it'd be interesting to think about how we can get them exposed even if their parent isn't playing or they Certainly. don't have the time to learn and things like that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to say a really big thank you for hanging out with us late for your great presentation. You guys have money in the bank. You're running a good course. You're getting good reviews. Your rates continue to be exceedingly low. Even you could have afforded to golf there uh, back in the day. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, um, thanks. Uh, yes. Thank, thank you for your time. Great presentation. I love how um, your effort is towards detail and um, great logo. Um, <laughs> And, and you're in the surplus. That's you know that that's great. I'm not sure if if you um, if you went over uh, um, just a, just a revenue question in terms of um, your projections for 2023. Sure. Uh oh, I might have broken it. Uh, okay, we got a townhouse here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to show that again. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's good. <laughs> Engage. Huh? Okay, here we go. Yep. So for fiscal year 23, so we follow the same fiscal year as the city, okay. uh, which so this will end uh, the end of this month. We're projecting uh, to do a little over almost $158,000 in net income uh, versus a budget of 81,000. Okay, that's great, great. Um, especially in the short time, 18 months, you know, you've been operating. Um, you had some numbers with um, the public um, um, and, and, and the residents. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe it was like 33,000 with, with the public, 11,000. Are there any marketing strategies that you, you guys have specifically for, you know, um, the residents to kind of increase those numbers? Not the close, you know, not to, not to bring the top number down, <laughs> sure. but, you know, to move both numbers up, but to kind of close the gap. Absolutely. Yeah. So with our uh, point of sale system, we collect the data from every golfer that visits the property, uh, including their address and their zip code. And we target our, our, our communication, whether it's email, uh, our social campaigns, et cetera, to specific uh, zip codes based on, and it's, it's tailored to whatever that zip code uh, would be. So for example, we would market to city of Bowie residents with our modern membership, how it's $20 less a month than the public, as well as our, we have a resident discount, uh, which is at least $5 off of every round as a discount for city residents as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Awesome. So, uh, Mayor and Council, I want to thank uh, TJ, Joe, and uh, Justin for coming on out. I know as we got into this, there was a lot of uh, sort of lack of understanding in terms of how golf uh, worked at our, our, our course. Uh, we've been gaining a lot of information. Um, the team worked really hard in the beginning. Uh, we, we sort of had a, a uh, half the number of golf carts available, so it was a, a, a slow start, um, but it was a good time to uh, adjust. Now that the carts are out there, the opportunity to grow, and uh, you know, I, I've been really excited to see both through the app and uh, the modern membership, the engagement and the new way uh, people have to engage with the golf course that they haven't had before. Um, the the uh, number of people being able to reserve rounds through the app is uh, terrific. And the flexibility with modern membership, people can uh, get in and get out as they want without having to commit for a full year on, on, on the membership. And I'm pretty sure those numbers in terms of the membership are higher than what the club had uh, previously. So uh, staff, we've enjoyed working with them and things are going very well okay great to hear it all right thank you all right we will now move on to the final item where we will be discussing legislative action request uh, and I will turn that over to our attorney. Thank you. Um, so there are several provisions in state law that govern how local governments are required to provide notice regarding different processes, such as charter amendment, resolutions, um, annexation, the sale of bonds, um, and speed camera citations, as well as um, planning commission plot adoption, which really doesn't affect um, municipalities in Prince George's County. But also constant yield requires a publication. Now that language has been modified slightly so as to not um, really impact as many municipalities. But nonetheless, that provision is there that you have to advertise these things in newspapers of general circulation within the municipality. Um, many local governments have found that to put them in newspapers of general circulation isn't quite as effective as it may have once been due to the lack of um, newspapers being provided as quote unquote newspapers of general circulation within the municipality. And so they've looked to alternate routes such as maybe putting notices in a municipal newsletter, posting it on the website, um, posting on social media. Some jurisdictions have provided notice of public hearings by way of text message um, when they've been able to collect enough information to do it that way. So um, over the last, I guess, decade, I would say, some efforts have been made to modify these publication requirements. And that's why we're here tonight to ask for the city's support in a Muni Maryland Municipal Attorneys Association, which is a department of the Maryland Municipal League, um, interest in putting forth a legislative action request to see if we can alter the manner in which municipalities are required to provide notice of some of the things that we talked, that I mentioned earlier, um, so as to save the jurisdictions money and to also be more effective to be able to reach the public without having them in an obscure newspaper that nobody's looking at. So um, Gaithersburg started this effort last year uh, with respect to, I believe it was charter amendment resolutions, and they're going to pursue it again this year. And so we have approached, the Maryland Municipal Attorneys Association is the we, have approached um, the members to try to see if we could get some support from the municipalities because the broader the support is among the municipalities for making these changes, the better the, the legislative action request will be received. And so we're here tonight to ask the city if they would support such a legislative action request. Okay, Matt, uh, so let me uh, comment on that because it's something I've heard about over, actually over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, with the decline in you know the physical newspapers and having that, uh, we we even talked about the local papers we had here 
that spent more time on the curb than they did in people's homes being read and, and other things. Uh, I, I would ask, and I'm going to put you a little on the spot here, uh, city manager, uh, as I just asked, it seems like that would be a more efficient way to get things out. But just from a standpoint of staff and other things, how, how do you see that affecting your success in getting that information out and getting it to the people we need? I'm going to make sure I understand uh, th what you all are proposing. You're all proposing legislation that would allow cities to look at other ways to uh, other record type advertisements. Does, does that mean using either social media or something else? Or what, what, what will we get to? So, yeah, so right now, when you do a charter amendment resolution, right. for example, or an annexation resolution, you're required to publish it so many times in a newspaper of general right. circulation in the city. And it, they've gotten very expensive, and the number of newspapers that are still considered to be a newspaper of general circulation have diminished. So, yes, jurisdictions have looked at um, making the publication requirements, for example, for their own um, processes that are not dictated by the state law. Um, the publication requirement may be to post on a website, to put in a municipal newsletter, to put in social media, to do text messaging when that's available. Well. a newspaper of that circulation, we'd almost be looking at just the Washington Post. And we know how expensive that can be to. Well, and it's, it's the, the print is not being read like it used to be either. So uh, if, if since our, the last seven years, our communications division has gone from a one man operate, one person operation to a, a more complex and, and, and robust five person operation. If, if, if legislation were passed saying you no longer ha are limited to the uh, newspaper record, as they said in one state or another, but you, uh, you, you can use multiple methods of communicating, we have all those methods available to us right now. Okay. And we could, uh, we could adjust very easily because we're, we're, all, we're all over the social medias, next door, websites, uh, is, 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 is very okay. useful and we were ready, we would be ready to transition without any additional personnel or anything, just a change in the mission. Yeah, and I, I, I like that because one of the things I, I know we've all run into is that uh, not everybody reads the same publication, you know, and so this way if we get it into multiple uh, means of communicating and getting that out, I, I think it would be advantageous to make sure that all of our citizens were engaged and know what's going on. So I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I wanted to ask that to make sure there was no issue with us from a standpoint of internal trying to do that. And I guess uh, along those lines, I'd let ask any of my councilmen any issues, any issue, uh, Clinton? Uh, we don't need to vote on this. We could just say that, give you a mass approval right now that we would support that. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay. Uh, Mayor, before getting to uh, your, your closing, uh, we did have on the agenda tonight for our closed session, we had a person we were uh, wanting to have with us. They're not going to be able to join us this evening, so we're going to need to postpone that until uh, after our next meeting so we can just adjourn tonight. No okay. closed session needed. Please remember we are still remember we are still in council session. At this time I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, I'd like to thank everyone who was here this evening. Again, staff, uh, to all the vendors, everyone, uh, the citizens for coming out, not only for tonight. Acknowledging those teachers, those educators, but the young people as well, the Boy Scouts, everyone who was here, and thank you all for uh, making Bowie the best city in the nation. Have a good night. <laughs>